So hi everyone and welcome to a new podcast. I'm Morgan, a shaman and intuitive coach. And today I'm not alone. I have my soul sister, my friend of many years now, Anna Marie. And uh, she's amazing and we really, really are on the same page. And we met, I think it was during a spiritual summit. And uh, we never lost touch since that. We really have the, the same value, share the same um, heart space of integrity and uh, giving value and being authentic and speaking truth and not into some superficial things. So I will let you introduce yourself, lovely. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I am Anna, aka the Liberation Queen, that is my brand, and I am spiritual and feminine embodiment mentor. I uh, help feminine leaders in guiding them in their spiritual journey. I work a lot around feminine energy, business energetics, and I'm also very intuitive and I'm also doing a lot of healing sessions with women and helping them release their trapped emotions from their, from their bodies. Yeah, this is so important and I'm really happy that you are offering these sessions because I was your client. I mean, I, I had a session, actually two sessions with you and this is really a type of work that is really needed because without realizing it, we, we carry so much crap within our system, whether it is physical body or also our energy field. Would you like to tell us more about how you came to do this, uh, to discover this technique? Of course. So I went through this like major spiritual awakening not so long ago, like maybe two months ago. Another spiritual awakening, but this one hit me really hard. I experienced a huge ego death and a big dark night of the soul. And I decided to speak about this because it was such a major life changer for me. And in that period, I really had to dive deep into my own soul, into my own essence where I was always guiding, guided into healing. And um, I, I had to admit to myself that I am actually being called to do this work. And I found this healing modality that is helping you to release these trapped emotions. And this is when I started doing this work, my own spiritual awakening started to be even deeper. Mm -hmm. And I was able to remove this part of my ego that was telling me you're not good enough to do this work you cannot do this I was not trusting myself before so I didn't do a lot of healing work with clients I didn't do a lot of channeling even though I was very intuitive I didn't go deep enough because I didn't trust what I was getting, the information that I was getting because of my own ego, because of my own fear. Mm -hmm. And this spiritual awakening allowed me to leave this ego uh, at the side to really go deeper into the channeling and into the healing. And I started to explore with the healing and I started to do sessions with me and realized that I feel so much better after them and that they like unblock me. And then I started to work with clients, some free sessions, then some better sessions. And the feedback was unbelievable. And now I'm doing this work. And it's like blowing my mind how deep it is and how transforming it is. And it's, it's unbelievable. I'm just incredibly happy that I am finally arriving at this place of doing this work because I was always guided and I never listened. And I was guided by the universe to go back over and over and over again to the same place because I was not listening to do mm -hmm. more of the healing work, deeper spiritual work. Because in my business before, I was just like scratching the surface with basically... Um, business and talking a lot about money and I had to realize that this is not something that I even want it's not that, that deep soul desire it's more of a ego desire but now I realize that I can have both without 
um, connecting my own worth with money or any kind of success in my life. Mm, right. And this is so big when we realize that we're soul calling and we're like, oh, can I really do that? Because, yes, I want to do it, but it's scary. And that's also why we always need to be our own guinea pig and try things on ourselves before, because if we need to show the way, we need to, <laughs> you know, it's like a <laughs> cut the grass so that you can make a, a path, you know, for um, for others. And um, it, it also comes down to integrity. You know, you cannot talk about something you have no clue about. So it's really about diving deep within yourself. And this also helps to have more confidence, right? Because you, you know you have the life proof for yourself that it works. And and you can see it for yourself. So then you're like, okay, so maybe I'm onto something there. The amount of things we store in our subconscious mind, in our energy and in our organs, this is something that is, I mean, we, we all know that. But with your, your technique, we're actually faced with a number, if I may say so, you know, for, for the brain, because, you know, um, it helps to put things into perspective. And the names of the emotions that you don't know you have within. So it really helps bring into perspective and to anyone who would think that in order to heal, you need to re-experience the the trauma and you need to suffer again and it's not that at all it's not that at all and even in what i do you will only face what you need to face for your highest good to learn the lessons that you need to to face and um i mean there, there i've never seen any horror story with a client when it was super super painful or it's more release but freedom not the heaviness and uh yeah so and this is also interesting your your new technique because of the impact on the organ and how we really see how it uh, it gets stored like information because that's what it is emotions are like a form of a well they are energy emotion obviously but it's still information linked like the emotion linked to a story the story that we perceived that we made up because we did our best as, as a child or so it's really interesting to to see and um, and to trace it back to the origin it's very very liberating and do you, do you have uh, moments when you when you find that the origin is inherited or do you always find that it comes from this lifetime? And Because I, I believe that what happens in this lifetime is echoing past lives as well. And my theory that I still need to, you know, because I'm always studying, that what is inherited from our parents, there was already some kind of grounds for that within our own story, right? So, because I, I know it was the case for me in my sessions that nothing was inherited and I was surprised because I could have sworn that some things were because I, I see those patterns in my family so would you like to to share your experience about what is inherited versus what is acquired yeah so the emotions can be inherited absolutely and I have found with myself that I had a lot of inherited emotions from generations, from my ancestors. And I had the emotion of anger inherited from my mom's side for like 147 generations, which is amazing that there are so many, right? So yes, of course, they can be inherited. I, I think they can also be from another life, but this is something that I haven't played yet with. Uh, I have to go deeper into that, so stay tuned for that <laughs> information. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of things can be inherited, but I feel like many things we trap in this life and we can clear all of that. And as you said, it doesn't have to be 
uh, painful. You don't have to relive them. You don't have to refill them. And many times we don't even need a lot of information about what mm-hmm. happened. You know, in the session, I always ask at what age was it trapped and where in the body it is. And I always ask, do we need more information? And if the answer is no, we can just go on and release the emotion. And many times we don't even have to dig deeper into see uh, to see what happened at that age the awareness is enough really it's uh, yeah it's actually i always say it's like 50 minimum 50 percent of the work awareness yeah yeah of course according to our soul path or whatever we choose to do in life it can be sometimes yes you have the awareness and it's just the first step but sometimes awareness is all you need mm-hmm. so or it, it, that's why I say minimum fifty percent of the work, and sometimes it's just one hundred percent of the of the work. <laughs> when it hits you, you know, like you have this realization that can happen in two different times. Like first in the brain, and then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, that's. Mm-hmm. But then, and then it's like you need to digest it, <laughs> and then at some point you're just doing whatever, having a shower or something, and then you're like, oh, whoa, <laughs> like the big yeah. thing. So. This is a phenomenon that is really always fascinating to me how how you you get this uh, you know different levels of understanding right and uh, mm, when yeah. the magic really happens yeah many times uh, your body and your subconscious is so ready to release those emotions that you don't even have to dig deeper into the experience of what happened and many times, you know, like in our session, you couldn't remember what happened at that age, but later you realized what happened, but you didn't have to relive them. You didn't have to refill them. It was like, okay, that happened. And now I released the emotion. Amazing. I can go on right. and look to the future. And when you release those emotions, you feel that freedom. And it's like now energy can flow freely through your body, through your chakras, through your whole energetic field, because you release those blocks from your body and you feel that lightness and you you feel how it starts to change you as a person and how you think in what decisions that you're making and how you're behaving and what emotions are you feeling. Your connections are deeper. You're healing your body physically. You're healing mentally. You're healing emotionally. You're healing spiritually. So it's not just, okay, we're removing this emotion. It's changing every area of your life. You can see it clearly but it takes time to integrate after a couple of days, a couple of weeks. It's like, um, I can even compare it a little bit to plant medicine, which I did a couple of, I had a couple of ceremonies with plant medicine. It's like you integrate for months and months and months after that. And you can watch how your life changed when you reflect back. And it's the same with, uh, releasing your emotions you after a couple of months you can reflect and see how your life changed mm. yeah because the the physical body is denser obviously so it's like everything needs to happen at an energy level first and then it may it needs to make its way through you know the astral body so everything that has to do with the mind and all that so it's it's really all the layers of our being that are being impacted in a good way and transformed so it's a kind of a rebirth i wanted to say something about releasing the emotions and and maybe we need to reassure some people around that because i, I know some people are afraid to cry or because crying is sometimes associated with something painful something negative or being afraid of uh, being weak or seeming weak or anything like that. But the type of emotional release when it comes to, you know, when when it happens that you cry during a release, it's not the type to be afraid of. And I know a lot of people fear that, but it's really beautiful because that's just (laughs) your soul being washed, first of all. And it's just toxins being materialized and coming out of your body. 
And this is really beautiful because there, there is really nothing to fear. And I find this, you know, I have a few male clients and in the percentage of people who release a lot of trapped emotion in the form of tears during sessions, men are often crying more than women. And this is amazing, yet at the same time, it, it, it's a little bit heartbreaking because these men also go through hard emotions, you know, and, and hard societal belief that, oh, men cannot cry. Men have to be tough, otherwise, you know, whatever. So I really think it's important to, to also tell men that it's okay to cry, it doesn't make them weak, and I really, really hold space and honor when a man, and just, of course the same for a woman, but I, I'm, I'm here talking from the, from the point of view of the client who is being vulnerable, like openly vulnerable. And this is really something beautiful, because it's okay to cry, it's okay to release, it's okay to be in pain, and it's just the wounded masculine that is in all of us, because we all have feminine and masculine energies, obviously. You have the wounded masculine, the energy that is super defensive, aggressive, or sometimes who doesn't dare and who takes more than he should. And then you have the same for women, because, you know, when I'm saying masculine, it's the same for, for women. And we were just talking uh, before we started recording how it is important and how many emotions can be trapped in our sacral area, just like you do the, the heart wall release with, with everything that has to do with uh, love, relationship, receiving, allowing yourself to receive. It's the same in the womb area. Yeah. Yeah, I see that a lot of women store their emotions in that sacral womb area, and it's basically same as a heart. A heart can create a wall of emotions to protect itself and your sacral area, your womb creates the same to protect itself from not getting hurt, from not feeling, especially if uh, some of uh, women have experienced sexual abuse. That is especially what happens then. But as women, we do experience a lot of um, sexual comments or sexual assaults in any way. And that starts at very early uh, like very young age and we trap all these emotions from these experiences in our sacral because our sacral wants to protect itself sure. but yeah uh, uh, for men they don't allow themselves to feel like women do and they are not expressing their emotions as women do because all because of this stereotype that we have about about men that they shouldn't uh, cry that they shouldn't experience um, and show their emotions that they need to be tough and that is very toxic behavior because of course we have masculine and the feminine energy but we are also human beings mm. and we are the same in that area so we do have emotions and when they are repressed they can come out in very toxic ways mm -hmm. with women and with men and of course when as you said with your uh, male clients you see that they are crying more than women because they have a lot of repressed emotions and women do um, tend to express their emotions freely well, more than men. So that's why you can see that uh, pattern with men of them expressing that way because those emotions need to come out. They need to come out in some way. And in that session, they are coming out in a form of crying, which is really good because if you keep repressing them, you basically create a, like a bomb of emotions that will explode at some time, which is not good. And, and then awful things can happen. I'm not saying that they will. Of course, uh, most people can control that, which is good, but it, it is still not good. It's still not healthy because even though they are not expressed in a way that they can come out in that kind of like toxic way, 
with abuse, for example, or something like that. But they can also be so repressed that they start to appear in a form of disease. Yeah. So it can create cancer or some kind of diseases in your body. And when you go to a doctor, they say, we have no idea why this is here. Like your body is basically attacking yourself. We have no idea why some of the diseases actually exist or some of the illnesses actually exist. They have no like core, like the root cause of that. They have no idea why this is there. It's because of we, because we are carrying so much of emotions and so much fear inside our bodies. And I always say this, we repress these emotions. We trap these emotions because we don't know how to release them. And human beings do tend to rethink about them, like replay them in their mind. Some kind of um, experience happened and you replay that in your mind and you basically refill and relive that experience. And the emotion is just getting stronger inside your body and you're not able to release that. So it becomes stuck and trapped in your body. But when an animal experiences some kind of a stress, um, they're able to release that. They shake it off after that incident and they're able to release all that stress and all that emotion. And they're always in the present moment. They're not looking to the past. So they are expressing it in a very healthy way. But of course, as human beings, we don't do that. You don't see a, a human being shaking off some of their <laughs> stress when it happens. So we do tend to repress and... Um, that's why we have those stuck emotions. And now we finally have some tools that can go deeper into your subconscious mind because everything is stored in subconscious mind. Every experience that ever happened, every emotion, every thought that ever happened is in your subconscious mind and it knows. So that's why we are in a healing session. We are connecting with your subconscious mind to ask, for the answers what happened why is this here where it is in the body that's why we can release that because your subconscious mind always knows and it can always give you those answers and it never forgets right and this is so important and when we were talking about how men have this uh, men also have womb trauma from their from their mother obviously. So that's why it's, uh, it's also very important to, to do this for, for them. I mean, to really consider this mother aspect, you know, because we all have both energies. But back to what you were saying about the emotions that are, it's literally poison, you know, emotions, energy in motion, they are meant to flow. If they don't, it's going against nature. If you block a river, then it's going to overflow and create imbalance in nature. And that's exactly the same with our body. And uh, it's going to clog our pipes, our energy centers, because we have a multitude of energy centers. So it's like all these micro energy centers all around our body are going to be clogged according to the type of emotion, according to each organ, you know, the, everything is perfectly orchestrated and has its perfect role. So, of course, one organ or one part of the body can be more impacted by an event or by an emotion uh, than, than another part of the body. It's really important to, to have this awareness and, and communicate with, uh, with the body, you know, communicate with ourselves and and learn to know our body language as well and how we can be there for ourselves. But something that you said about how we tend as human beings to always think back of this episode and replay it in our head. Like you said, animals don't do that. And we do that because we are not taught to control our thoughts or our, our mind and I'm not talking about suppressing here I'm just talking about dealing with things and releasing them out of your system well you know like with the emotions but also with the thoughts and this is also something to do with self-abuse when you replay an episode all the time in your head 
and you always talk about it and you're like yeah but this is because this happened to me and uh, you know we, we've all been there at some point you know like if I had known this as a teenager that I could have the choice not to replay the episodes in my head that would have changed my life. I used to do that a lot, you know. And that's when you, you really understand that it's beyond your control, or at least before you know better, <laughs> it's beyond your control. And this is because of the chemicals that are released. When we think about these things, we refill the emotions. And because we are not taught how to, to deal with our emotions, and we know that feeling emotions is being alive, then the, when we replay those scenarios in our head, we feel alive because we, we have this adrenaline kick and then it becomes an addiction. Absolutely. And when you realize how it works and that you can change it and you don't have to always talk about this and that it's also because, you know, sometimes it's safer to stay in the trauma because it gets you attention and I'm not saying this in a bad way you know like it's because you, you're afraid of uh, abandonment or rejection so if you keep reminding yourself of this trauma that happened then you you're sure that people are going to check on you then you're going to have the attention then you're going to be included then you're not going to be rejected yeah. or abandoned but this is toxic af yeah and that's how trauma bonding happens and mm -hmm. trauma bonding is so toxic. Like to find people who went through the same thing as you, if they are happy, quote unquote happy, you know, I mean, if they, if they are satisfied with always repeating the same thing, they are feeding the trauma. And this is not healing. Yeah. It's important to find people who are uplifting because trauma bonding is disastrous. Mm hmm nothing can come nothing good can come out of it or, or if it does it's temporary right mm -hmm. yeah because at some point you you just end up talking about it again and again and again and you, you just perpetuate it so why would you perpetuate a trauma that is poisoning you and that someone caused directly or indirectly according to the situation you're letting this human being win mm-hmm so this is really important to, to really seek people who are helping you lift yourself up. Yes, yeah, so important. And as Joe Dispenza says, um, our body becomes addicted to those feelings. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's why you're even seeking subconsciously. It always happens subconsciously. That's why you're even like seeking those things or any kind of experience so you can refill that emotion because your body like needs that emotion like a drug basically huh. to feel it again and sometimes when we are um not feeling a lot of happy emotions a lot of good emotions like high frequency emotions we tend to seek for those low frequency those like negative things mm -hmm. because we feel alive as you said and of course we don't know that it's all like subconscious thing and i didn't know that when i was um a child basically because i felt a lot of anxiety i felt a lot of like depression and negative thoughts and i was basically seeking them and, and repeating them over and over and over in my head and when i started to do the work around shifting my own mindset it was very hard to do because your mind is so wired for mm -hmm. you to feel that and for you to think this way and you think oh i cannot change of course you can but it takes time and it takes practice and it will not be easy at first but of course when you start to do this work with healing work with mindset work it will become easier and easier and easier but you also have to have this awareness that you are not your thoughts you're so much more than your emotions your thoughts your experiences and you can rise above that and not give your power away to them because you're not a victim but when you feel like a victim and i felt like that and I'm not judging anyone because I was in that kind of place so I'm speaking from experience you don't know better 
so that's why you end up in trauma bonding that's why you end up uh, feeling very anxious and relieving all those things because you don't know better and it's like a loop and you have to break that loop somehow and of course things in your life happen you have the experiences in your life that are like wake up mm. And many people don't recognize that and they ask themselves, why this happened to me? Like all, all the bad things happen to me. Bad things always happen to me. You hear people say that, but you basically attract all those experiences subconsciously to wake up. And I know this can sound triggering for some people because they will say, oh, why would I do that to myself? Because you don't do this consciously. You do this subconsciously to basically wake yourself up from that and say, I, I'm taking my power back and I'm creating a different life. I, but you, when you don't know that you would have that power, it's very hard to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's so true because I, I was the same. I, I didn't know better. And that, that's not an excuse nowadays. Nowadays, when you know better, once you know better, then it becomes a choice you know, and we cannot recognize what we don't know. I didn't know how true happiness felt. I was always in fear and anxiety. So obviously you always tend to go to what is familiar until, like you said, until you wake up, you, you have this thing. Why is this always happened to me? What can I do to change that? Like, because at some point you're just like, oh, am I, am I doomed or what? you know and so it's really the awareness of the pattern once again the awareness and then the dedication to yourself because you owe it to yourself to break that pattern once the awareness is kicking it's about trying all you can and doing all you can because like i said it's not about trying it's about doing um to 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 really break that and shift and yes it takes practice but bodybuilders are not bodybuilders overnight and if you think of your brain or your nervous system rewiring as the muscle to build it's obvious it's going to take a bit of time of course you and i and other people like us have modalities that can help accelerate the path But there is always a point in time when you need to take responsibility for yourself and choose. At some point, you're going to have low moments and you're going to be like, oh, oh, this song, I'm hearing that song. Oh, I used to feel this emotion like, you know, and you just cry your eyes out. And I've been through that, you know, just playing that stupid song. And that is self-torture, because even if it's healthy to release emotions, It has to be with the intention, otherwise it's self-abuse. At some point you have the choice, oh, do I have the choice to actually listen to that stupid song that makes me cry? Or do I have the choice to listen to something happy and uplift my mood? Do I choose to stay in that low place? Or do I choose to do something for myself to shift the energy, not to escape from yourself? Because once you're mindful, you cannot escape unless you choose to escape. So it's really about breaking the loop and raising the frequency, raising the vibration and choosing something different. Because if you feel these emotions and you are not happy and you want to change, then why go back to what is make you unhappy? Mm, yeah, it's that addiction and it's realizing I didn't know that when I when I read that and I highly recommend everyone to read Joe Dispenza's books because he talks about that and he connects beautifully uh, the spirituality and how you are the creator of your own reality with scientific um, results because he did a lot of research about that and I feel like a lot of people need that that side of that that scientific because we are very logical beings too and sometimes we need that side so i highly recommend everybody to read those books because when i read that it was mind-blowing to me to realize that it's not who i am it's just my body is addicted of feeling anxiety my body is addicted of feeling this low frequency of motions and i can break this loop it's not who I am. 
Okay. And once I realized that it's that awareness, it's like you wake up suddenly and it's like, okay, I can change my life. I can choose differently. But then the real work starts mm. because now you are aware and now you have to be stronger than those emotions and those thoughts to choose differently. It's like addiction of watching a TV. Mm. If so many people can just sit and watch TV and that is normal to kill the time so to okay. say because that is easy that is also just an addiction and once you try to break that addiction at first you will see how hard it is because you're so used to doing that because your body feels safe when you do the same things over and over again it's like you're an autopilot when you look at your life how many things are you doing on repeat Mm. on autopilot basically so you are not living your life it's your body taking control of you it's taking that control and that power away from you because you're repeating over and over and over again the same things and for many people what happens when they're older at like 60 70 80 they look back at their life and think what did i do with my life mm. And, and that is sad because now, no matter how old you are, you can change your life. You can release those emotions from your body. You can do something to change your life. And I just want to say one thing, that mindset work is amazing. Mm -hmm. It really is. And it really helped me to become aware, to start to, start to break those patterns. But the cherry on top is the healing work is that energetic work that we are doing that you can do with yourself that you can seek help that you can hire someone who is an expert basically in that area who, who can help you to release those emotions in any healing modality that you choose that you feel called to do and then you will actually start to see huge huge change because you can with mindset work you can change you know to a point but it's very hard because the mindset work works on the mind part and basically that is like five percent of our mind the mm. logical one the the one that is conscious that we know about and 95 percent of your mind is subconscious you don't know that that part of you and it's basically running your life but he with healing modalities you can go deeper inside your body you can go deeper inside your own subconscious mind and now you can start to heal those wounds that you cannot do with the mindset work and that's why i always highly recommend that and i was also skeptical before of the energetic work because i didn't believe in that but it's also realizing that it's your own logical mind not letting you believe in in mm. the energetic work because it needs like a proof or something that it actually actually works but when you start to do that when you actually let yourself and allow yourself and open yourself up to the work you will see huge difference because you are able to remove those traumas those wounds that you have been carrying not just for the years and experiences that happened in your life but your ancestral patterns too and that is amazing thing with, with this type of work. But of course, every time you have to be open to do this, because if you're not open, if you're skeptical, it will be very hard to do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so the, the possibilities are infinite and our potential as human beings as spiritual beings having human experience is infinite as well and we can reinvent ourselves anytime anytime and it doesn't necessarily have to take ages it just takes one decision and then committing to this decision basically and uh, and not giving up on yourself so is there something that you would like to to say to conclude uh, for the end, I just want to say that this is an incredible work that will change your life. So if you're feeling called to at first experiment and just see some changes, of course, find someone who 
is doing this someone who you trust because uh, out there there are a lot of so-called healers that mm -hmm. are not really healers that are not coming from a place of integrity and that's why it's so important to tune into your own intuition to choose a person that is coming from the highest integrity and you will see su such a huge change because this work is incredible this energetic work in general healing work is really incredible and it will change your life and of course as i always say it's so much deeper than just the mindset work and it can help you change in every area of your life and you will see change in every area of your life even though if you're working in just one part if you choose to work on just one part of your life you will see change in every single part of your life. It's just something that happens. It's very sacred work. And I'm so grateful that I am a part of this and that I'm doing this and that I'm finally admitting myself that I am here to, to do this work with other people and that I'm here to change and that, I'm, that I am a catalyst in their own healing journey. So thank you for having me here. It was such a beautiful opportunity to speak to your audience. Oh, thank you for being here. And, uh, you know, it was amazing conversation as always between you and I. <laughs> uh, would you like to tell everybody where they could find you? Yeah, so I am on Instagram under The Liberation Queen. And I'm on Facebook under Anna Marie Janish. Or also you can find me under Liberation Queen. And um, I am just building my website, but it's not done. So I will uh, not share that yet. But you can find me on Instagram. I was, I'm was i always on Instagram stories. I have a lot of resources about the healing work that I'm doing, releasing trapped emotions. I do talk a lot about feminine embodiment and business energetics, if this is something that you are interested in. So you can find me there. You can connect with me. Just send me a message, follow me, or send me a friend request, and we will connect. Awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing your website <laughs> and all the amazing things that you are working on with your new modalities that are exciting and uh, your amazing testimonials that you have received already. Although you, you mm -hmm. really started, you already have changed many lives and, uh, and I can uh, testify of that because I was honored to, to try this these sessions for for myself and um, because of course you know as healing catalyst we also need to heal ourselves so yeah for for us as well as a professional who work in integrity it's very important to have people we trust because we are so mindful of our energies and all that that we're really um, so I'm really grateful that um, you know we have um, this uh, this connection and we can uh, help each other and because uh, this is uh, this is really important just you and I don't mess with that you know it's so yeah. so precious so it's really important to have people you trust to to do this kind of work with like you are so rightly saying so yeah. thank you very much for having been here I'm very happy for this episode and thank you everybody for listening and I will see you in the next episode bye bye Bye.